so friends welcome back uh, to the data engineering uh, project so in the previous video we talked about like uh, how we will be using various aws services to process the data in a end to end integrated pipeline so it's time to start doing it practically so let me open my aws trial account so that you guys can understand what i'm talking about so just give me a moment so this one is my aws trial account i hope you are aware like how to create aws trial account if you are not aware you can go through my data engineering training program where i have talked about how to create free aws trial account at the same time we have talked about like there are two type of users in aws one is uh, you can say a root account who have full access full control over everything including the budgets billings resources and including the deletion of your aws account but definitely we cannot allow everyone to log in into aws as a root user so for our team members for our developers for our testers we create iam role so in this case you can see that i am logged in with my iam role for simplicity i have given the name as iam underscore neeraj you can give any name so i have logged in as a iam user and whenever you create any iam user you have to provide some permission to that user suppose i am planning to work on s3 lambda uh, crawler athena so all these services i need access otherwise i won't be able to access these services on aws console and in that case i won't be able to work upon that so for more detail how to create the users how to add the permissions how to uh, you can say add different type of uh, permission policies you can uh, follow my data engineering uh, training playlist okay so let's quickly start so first of all what we will do is we will be creating s3 bucket where we can maintain our input and output data so i will be searching for s3 service okay there are two buckets already available which were created as part of a different project but for our data engineering uh, data pipeline project we will be creating a new bucket so i will click on create bucket and provide some name so i would say data pipeline project and in order to make it unique i am giving some number because the s3 bucket name across the globe it should be unique that's why i am giving some number so that it is unique and after that you can go with the default settings in case you want to know more about these settings i have a separate dedicated class for s3 which can give you much more detail about s3 bucket but as of now as part of this project we will be quickly creating a bucket <coughs> okay so i will click on create bucket okay you can see the last one data pipeline project 007 bucket has been successfully created since we have to maintain like input and output data so let's do one thing let's create two folders here so i will click on create folder and let's give some name like input underscore data okay and similarly we'll create another folder like output data okay so that we are not mixing our input and output i would like to keep it separate because input data may contain valid or invalid rows on the other side output folder should contain only valid data so i am creating another folder output data and i am creating a folder okay now in input data you may have multiple type of i mean different type of data like employee related data department sales there can be anything depends upon your project okay right now i have a sample data which we will be using for our uh, training purpose so let me do one thing i will show you that data so that you can see that just give me a moment just give me a moment let me open that file
Okay, you can see this uh, notepad uh, file. Let me try to increase the font size if that would help you. Okay, I think it should be visible. So you can see that first line is a header line. Employee ID, name, age, gender, department ID, manager, employee ID. For training purpose, for our project purpose, I am keeping data very small. But in real time, you may have a la large amount of data. In this data, you can notice few things that I am expecting these fields for every row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 fields I am expecting. But there are few, tab few rows where the number of fields are less or more. If you see, I will show you line number four right in this one we have detailed till department department id after that there is no manager employee id so basically this data is invalid this is lacking one field which i'm expecting similarly some field can be some rows can be having extra field you can see the line number 10 this has department id and manager employee id and finally one more field pune that is the name of the city which i was not expecting right so there are some less number of fields or more number of fields and at the same time you can see that line number 7 employee id is missing and that's very important and mandatory field for every employee i am expecting that employee id should be present so basically just to explain you that this data contains few valid and few invalid rows our lambda function will be scanning this data line by line and whatever valid data only that it will be keeping into our S3 bucket into a different folder. That thing we will be doing uh, shortly. Okay, so I am coming back into S3 bucket. So I was explaining, right, for different type of data, we can create different subfolder as well. It would be like uh, easy to maintain. So what I am doing is, I am creating a folder with the name employee. Employee, okay. And then I will create folder. So before we insert some data into this, and we are expecting that as soon as we are uploading some data into this particular bucket, it should trigger our lambda function, right? So lambda function is not yet ready. We have to create a lambda function and we have to create along with the lambda function we need to create an im role as well as i explained that depending upon the im role your lambda can perform something okay so this is all about our input data and creation of s3 bucket and s3 folders so that's all about this uh, small video i will see you in the next video where we will be starting with creating the im role for lambda function then we will be creating our lambda function and we'll be talking about Python code as well, which is capable of scanning our input file and separating out the valid and invalid data. So see you in the next video.